Hello everyone, it's another awesome weekend and I'm back. I've got a bunch of uh, supplies and parts to get this Michigan loader up and running again. So I guess I've got a couple things I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna get into it really quick, not gonna talk too much. I've got like a mechanical oil pressure gauge I wanna put on the back of the engine. I've gotta rewire this because I didn't purchase any uh, 8Ds Prices are much more expensive than they were before, uh, like $350. And they're the only 8Ds, uh, except for maybe the other air compressor that I would use. But since I use 31s on almost everything, I'm just going to convert it over and put uh, 31s in place. I'll uh, probably have to stick about four in. Looking at it, six would probably equal all the 8Ds, but I think four should be enough. So I'm going to get in there, do a bunch of cleaning up of the uh, cables. I might have to make some new ends, get some other connections ready. But uh, I'm going to get to it now. And this is the uh, back of the cab. Inside there's where the starter button switch. And this switch just uh, would always burn out. It was no good. I went and found this 60 amp. I really do hope it's 60 amp. If it's 60 amp, I don't have to put the other uh, solenoid relay in. Well, I'm going to try it out. And, uh, but I got like one end redone. But the other wire that goes has become very short. So I'm going to extend it with some yellow wire. So I can work on it, move things in and out, and not be fighting the lengths of the wire. So when we get that, we'll get the push button in, and then we'll go back down to the battery box and start working on that, because I have to carry some batteries over. Probably have to make some uh, uh, cable pieces and stuff for that. So just a lot of little things to do. All right, got push button switch in. Now this is the key switch. I hope it works. If it doesn't, I may have to replace that. So I've got the, that button in there. Now I've been working on the battery uh, connectors. I've uh, taken off the, the studded type ends. I crimped on and then uh, soldered in uh, new ends on some of them. I still got to make some more, but uh, I do have some heavy duty short pieces that are up at the top uh, by the fortress. So I think I'm going to take a ride to the top because I haven't been there for a little while where the fortress is and grab some uh, uh, battery cables. So I know there's some in uh, one of the little buildings there, but uh, luckily they weren't in the main shop. So it's going to head up there and grab some. A bunch of these uh, battery cables. I was in the old uh, little mining building right there, just with the, all the mining equipment, as you can see here. So now that I got, I only need these two. I've got the ends I can uh, use to uh, uh, put ends on two of the other cables. That should be good enough. I mean, there should be enough here to uh, hopefully get the Michigan uh, running. Uh, just taking a quick look. There's the fortress over there on the uh, south side. So head back down, get some more working done. Well, while I'm here working, suddenly it looks like I got some company. Wonder who that would be. I guess it's my friend Les. He's popped by to say hi, and I don't know if he's here to help or to hurt. Oh, come on now. <laughs> I'm always here to help. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, uh, i just been uh, working up uh, on this thing all the morning. Yeah, so it uh, looks like getting close to trying to start it. Nice. 
So nice. I'm working on all the battery cables and then uh, we'll uh, see about getting it started. Well, we're gonna do a quick test here to see if the starter will turn as soon as I get these couple batteries and everything connected in and my main ground. Got all nice and clean contacts. If it turns the engine well, then I think I'll probably be happy with just two batteries. But I still probably have to make me a new battery box for this. So, looks like we got all the wires connected. And I am going to start it up. Get all this loose stuff cleaned up. All right. First thing I want to do is let you see if it'll even bounce. Cross your fingers. Something's turning. We got that. Something, uh, uh oh, was not good. <laughs> Should we check the oil on your car? Oh my gosh! Oh man! Oh my poor cell phone! <laughs> oh man! Oh, I guess we blew a line. I noticed it went and it went down as quick as I can. I didn't realize that. Uh, wow, everything got bummer. Pulled up. So it must be that one line up there. Yeah, it's which... on this. It would be the left-hand ram. Oh, this one right here. One of those two. I believe it's that one. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, it's that one. 
Say Megan. Uh, I don't see a big hole. But looks like it definitely Well, it was running and then it stopped. <laughs> well, not stopped running, but we blew a uh, hydraulic line. The motor so, runs. Yeah. And uh, my car just got lubricated. <laughs> Holy moly. All right, well. Turtle wax. Well, we know we got a couple things I got to do. I'm going to pull this line off and I will take it uh, in, the, in the Salt Lake and this week uh, when I am uh, have some time on lunch, I will take it down and have a new hydraulic hose made. Looking at me, I'm, looking, I'm guessing that hose is going to be probably somewhere like $300. That's a good price. Yeah, but that's still expensive. But it's really easy. I got four bolts here to take off. Four bolts over there because it's a hard line it's it's not very long so it's uh maybe about a 15 you know 10 minute job to get that line off and then uh i can have a new one made so i'm gonna still work on a few more things here and uh see how it goes There's, i want to see how i'm gonna be able to see out getting home with all the oil oh my cut i can't believe how i do <laughs> it, it's a it's a mess of oil oh. just waxed your car it's gonna be shiny now until it gets the dust yeah but I got oil on my tools it's gonna to take me a minute here to clean all my tools off and put them back so wow. gonna probably have to use the pressure washer at work yeah so some got not really much got inside good luckily my trunk is mostly clean so uh what a mess been uh, just getting the, the bolts broken on that so if i walk up underneath and i'm actually standing all the way up i've got to keep loosening them up uh where's my other wrench right here Sorry, I try to get the uh, impact on it. I could probably get it on those now, but I was at an angle, it didn't want to break them free, but I got them broke free now. So let's see if I can get the impact on them. Gotta watch out. The uh, bucket's tilted down, it's a lot of weight here. I'm hoping that the leak is all out of any pressure at all. So when I do that, well, it's going right into a little gap right there. So, all right, well, I'm going to finish taking it off and then we'll see if it matches up. There's like two going to those rams. We have the lower one and the upper one. They look like they're exactly the same and they're exactly the same length. So I'm going to take the one off match it with the other one if it uh, looks like the exactly the same i'll probably replace both of them so uh, looking at uh, all these hoses here and there is some new ones you can tell there's that one's a new one uh but uh yeah that's what uh you get with old hydraulic lines they can go at any time so all right let me finish getting that off and we'll uh, see what else we have I got the hydraulic line off and it just ruptured the old uh, line there. And this is exactly the same size as the uh, other side. So we have two per ram and the far one looks like somebody has replaced those hydraulic lines. So they look like they're made it looks like two different uh, manufacturers made it so this seems to be just fine so i'm going to take this and uh, see how much they want for one and if it's not too much i'll buy two and then replace both of these on this side so i've got that and, uh, notice i'm going to have to do some uh, 
cleaning on the ramrods. Got that to do and some other stuff. So got a few things to take care of here uh, before uh, we close up. Well, since pretty much all the gauges don't work, I do want to make sure I got good oil pressure. So I have some of these oil pressure sensors on the side. This one I cleaned up and just pulled out. Uh, and then there's a, a one of the uh, oil pressure uh, senders right there, but uh, it's not working up on the uh, gauge. So I wanted to put a mechanical one here and then along with the gauge up in the cab, at least one down here so I can always make sure it was correct. However, these are like quarter inch fittings and going into the block, even over here, they're all one eighth. So I can't like fit this in. So I am going to have to just hold off on uh, checking the oil pressure till next time. Now that I know that it is uh, one eighth. I really was certain that was like quarter inch, but well, I was completely wrong. All right, well, I'm gonna get out, finish cleaning up and see about what we're gonna do. It was awesome to see it start up. Not so awesome to see it blow a hydraulic line. We, uh, I'd started doing a little bit of looking around and uh, apparently it blew uh, hydraulic oil all the way over to here, side of this, uh, this has got hydraulic oil, and it looks like, that, uh, the, the, uh, I'm not sure if that's, if that's just water, but here, you can see more hydraulic oil, more hydraulic oil, or more, all the way right about to here, look how far away we are. So it shot that hydraulic oil way the heck out here. You can even see it on the ground. It's still going. So that's uh, rather impressive where it shot out that hydraulic oil. So, all right, well, I think that's gonna be it for today. Got a week, uh, long week coming up. And uh, I need to head back, try to de-oil the car which it's uh, firmly coated in a nice lubricating oil. So uh, thanks everyone for watching and uh, Les and I will say bye bye for now. And uh, so, uh, uh, make sure you uh, subscribe, uh, like the videos and always click on the notifications if you wanna be notified. And as I say always, I'll see you on the next video.